Hi, Andrea. Thanks for joining me. How are you doing? No I'm good. How are you, Mark? Good. I'm very good. Thank you. Um, we are here to discuss a particularly hot topic, excuse the pun, um, <laughs> rising energy prices um, and the impact that that has on us as landlords. Um, and I think it's uh, obviously it's very relevant. It's on, well, everybody's minds at the moment. It's not just landlords, not just the rental market that's going to be impacted on this. And quite a, a complicated area, actually, because some of this has got to be handled quite sensitively. We were just talking before the call about, um, you know, obviously as responsible landlords, we've got businesses to run, but equally we are mindful of the impact on tenants and, you know, not wanting to just completely throw all of the, the, the increased costs on, onto the onto the, the tenant's plate. So essentially, where do we where do we start as landlords, particularly those landlords that are running all bills included strategies? So HMOs, serviced accommodation, what are some of the top tips that what, what what are you looking at within your portfolio? Well I think obviously being energy efficient is important anyway, because like yeah. we see changes. And I think it's more important now than than ever. Um, obviously, with my, regards to my HMOs, there's several things I've looked at. You can put your rents up, and you know, there's nothing wrong with doing that as long as you're not going crazy. Yeah. Um, because you've got to understand that these people are obviously on a budget as well. I know that potentially I might take a slight hit on yeah. my cash flow, but that's fine because that's why you have more than one yeah. uh, strategy, more than one property, um, because it will impact. But some of the things that I've kind of looked at, I do have in my HMOs um, Inspire, so you can kind of monitor your usage. I've always had that anyway, because people can just whack it up to 28 and they'll have the windows open. And, and so for those listeners that don't know what that is, so that's basically a smart thermostat. Yes, so this Hive yeah. Inspire, there's this different ones. You can yeah. look this ones on the market. Um, with regards to that as well, um, you can look at the fair usage policy, which, you know, obviously yeah. we discussed earlier about you, you've got to be careful when you, you put this in. If they're in the first six months as a tenant, so you can't necessarily yeah. put that in. It's something you've got to an handle sensitively. Yeah. But you can give them notice like you do with rent increases. You can give them a couple yeah. months notice. We are going to bring this fair usage policy in. So but what I, is that? What And how does that work? So a fair usage policy. So at the minute, all your bills are included and that's totally fine. But if you feel like your bill's our bills are going to increase anyway. If you you tend to use it, I think students. I think I know landlords that you use it a lot for students because it can be quite um, less less fair <laughs> about the um, you know all the heatings on, everything on, lighting, windows wide open. Everything. Not that it affects that, but you know, yeah, they're not as as focused on your bills as you are. Yeah, um, which is why Hive or Inspire or any of those is pretty good for that. But you can offer that out. So if you if you know what your usage is on an annual basis, and it, it should be roughly, you know, the same ish. It's going to fluctuate slightly. So you know what your usage is. You just got to make sure that they stick with that usage and not go above it. Um, and then you can charge them on top of that. I do see complications with that. I'm not going to pretend that I feel like yeah. it's going to be a straightforward scenario. And I haven't put it into my properties yeah. yet. I think. Yeah. Because I think you've got to be, again, you've got to be mindful that if you've got an HMO and you've got four, five, six, seven people living in there, you're going to get conflict from some saying, I ain't putting the heating on. I'm not to, I'm not using more water. So why am I getting, am I paying extra? I don't want to be, do a knee-jerk reaction, you know, take it out on my, on my tenants because we're all in the same situation. They, and that's um, probably your first port of call, isn't it? it yeah. Is communication with the tenants. I think this is slightly unprecedented in terms of what we're seeing at the moment and it impacts on everybody, uh, on everybody's day-to-day -day lives. So I think, you know, if communication and just being honest about the situation and the challenges was ever going to work, I think now is the time to, to work on that. Uh, rather than, like you say, suddenly just lumping them with a contract change and a, and a rent right rent raise um yeah. you know opening that uh opening that door for communication is key isn't it but definitely moving forward and with regards to the energy performance um mm. that we, we're going to have to upgrade them anyway yeah if you're in a brand new property then That's just it. do make sure you've got your insulation in there yeah. good insulation not just try and cut corners don't yeah. because you're cutting corners and it'll cost you long term um, windows make sure you've got a good fence a double glazed 
windows triple glazed if you if you want to push yeah. it out that far because it's going to bring up your epc and it's going to yeah. cost you less for your bills buy to let or hmo or whatever it might be is make sure you've got smart meter installed you know which which sounds like a, a real basic thing but i know i've been guilty of that past getting badgered by the utility companies we need to install your smart meter and i'll get round to it but i, I i've certainly been responding to those recently because yeah. The last thing you want to do is go on to estimated usage and find that you're getting, um, you know, astronomical bills because they are uh, inaccurately estimating the amount of usage that's going on at the property. And it also shows you as well where your usage is and how yeah. much and how you can. And it gives you it, the smart meters is actually very good because they tell you where you could save. Yeah. So why would you not? Yeah. Which is interesting, which brings us on to systems and, and you've mentioned serviced accommodation because I know it's a popular strategy at the moment, but obviously that is very much all bills included. And I think if convincing tenants to be sympathetic towards HMO landlords is difficult, it's 10 times more difficult um, if you're effectively checking into a, a, an Airbnb or, or, or an apart hotel because that's not in the forefront of people's minds. You know, you no. go and, and to be fair, it's a bit like not wanting to pass on all the cost uh, implications to the tenant. We, in our service accommodation properties, we we really push the home from home thing. I, I don't want... I don't want the, the 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 guest to arrive and be confronted with all sorts of warning messages about turn this <laughs> off and do that and do this and do that. So it is getting the balance right. But I think the beauty, in a sense, like you said, um, it's much easier that way to respond to uh, void periods to, to 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 times when the property isn't booked and turn the heating off because the last thing you want is to have the whole you know the heating going full whack and you've got Monday to Thursday empty. Um, you can respond to that in real time in, 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 a, in a lot easier way. And we've even got a system going in where there are motion sensors on the smart thermostats. So if they pick out that the guest has been away for the duration of the day, they'll switch the heating off and it will come back on when they walk through the door. Yeah. So, again, I mean, it's not cheap. Um, there, there's, there's an investment in that infrastructure. But what is it going to save for the down the key, line? isn't it? You have yeah. to work out that, you know, and, and and we say this to obviously all of our to all of our students in any case you have to weigh up the pros and cons and how much it's going to cost you in store to how much it's going to save but with energy costs right now it's probably yeah. a no-brainer i did yeah. say to you i'm going to do that with my hmos as soon as they leave the room the lights go out the heat is <laughs> off <laughs> move away from the shower uh, your radiators are all working efficiently the blade and everything else yeah. so you just have to make sure everything's working so and this is the time to think ahead isn't it yeah. so that you know quite yeah. often hmos they need a little bit of a refresh anyway when there's a turnover of tenants if someone yeah. moves out or if it's a student property the whole lot move out but maybe now you know on top of the liquor paint and the the, the deep carpet clean or whatever you're going to do you might want to start chipping away at some of the end of any energy efficiency upgrades that are going to be needed further down the line. If you've got pre-existing, you're going to have to go back and probably update yeah. certain things. It is, it's, it's what we do with landlords. It's all thinking, oh, it's going to cost us money. But yeah. actually, it's our responsibility. Okay. Yeah, and I think that's yeah. the right message, isn't it? Like, I, yeah. you know, as you do, you're scrolling through social media and I think there's... It's, this would not be your approach. This would not be my approach. But there's certainly a lot of landlords out there quite flippant about some of the energy price rises and saying, well, that's fine. The rents are just going to go up to cover it. And I think yeah. that, you know, there's an inevitability about that to a certain degree. But I know the government are going to be looking quite closely at how those price rises are passed on to the tenants and making sure it's done in a fair way. And if there were any inkling that, you know, there was profiteering going on or that we were increasing rents, you know, by such an amount just to cover our backs. And in reality, the, the tenant is overpaying for the energy, then that's going to get looked at quite closely. So, you know, it's just getting the balance right. And I guess, again, that's the difference, isn't it, between HMOs and serviced accommodation to a degree is that with serviced accommodation, we can be a little bit nimbler, a little bit quicker to respond with price increases and stuff because we yeah. can almost respond in real time that like I can put, we could have someone checking out tomorrow and I could have the rate, the nightly rate go up by 10 pounds tomorrow, you know, it, and we can respond much quicker. I think with HMOs, it's going to be, you're going to have to build this into your planning and your cash flow over the next 12 months, potentially. Yeah, definitely. Things you need to do is make yeah. sure that your EPC is going to be 
to the standard it needs to be anyway, which is a C coming for, yeah. moving forward. So double glaze windows, make sure your heating system's up to standard or, you know, the best it can, best heating system you get, get your Inspire in, which is going to be controlled. You know, we focused a lot on HMOs and, and service accommodation, but even with your buy selects, it's about working with the tenants because ultimately, you know, the last thing you want to hit is, is a situation when we've got a lot of rent arrears um, because the costs have gone up and the tenants can't afford to pay the rent. And, uh, you know, the energy companies are a lot less sympathetic about chasing for their arrears than than we're able to as landlords. So, yeah. you know, it's going to have knock on effect there as well. So it's it's just about working with them, isn't it? I think. But it's also I worth think as well, though, I think now, you know, if we have to evict somebody let's yeah. say we because they've not paid the rent and our EPC is not standard. It will get thrown out, I think, because they'll, yeah. as a landlord, we'll get looked at as that we're not being ethical. Yeah, this is why point. we teach you to do everything yeah. to the letter yeah. and yeah, try which... ahead of the curve. And I'm not trying to scare anyone, but just be mindful of that. It's our responsibility. As you can't just get in this and think to yourself, "Oh yeah, we're going to make loads of money." Yeah. It's yeah. not just about that. We're we're providing homes for people. Yeah, yeah. Um, affordable homes for people. You know, we're not overcharging. Yeah. Um, we're charging a fairer rate for a, for a good accommodation so we have to do things properly but um, that also brings on to the other side of the coin right because we're not only landlords we're investors yeah. so let's think a little bit about the opportunities that might come out of this yeah because actually you know you the the, the impact is going to be widespread across landlords we're going to see the cost going up and you know there will be there will be landlords without question who are either unable or unwilling um to make that that investment back into their properties again or we'll be looking to offload stock yeah well i've is... already seen it on forums of you Landlords yeah yeah, yeah, owning, yeah oh you know yeah we're just exactly. trying to cripple us we're not going to yeah. make any money and yeah. then you can sit back and think yeah we'll uh take that on refurb it you know yeah. get it it's up to standard bit, it's a bit like hmo licensing isn't it everyone was sort of a little bit panicky about that coming in but my take on any kind of regulation licensing whether it's epc regulations is ultimately it's going to favor the professional operators yeah um, and opportunities are going to come off the back of it so you know it's not it's not all doom and gloom i think as investors no, we're always going to look for the yeah, opportunity we don't need it to sound doom and gloom i think we've just got to be prepared and it's yeah. about being prepared and making sure that we're doing the right thing for yeah. not just for ourselves but for our tenants yeah. and being as ethical as we can and we yeah. you know it is going to cost more money to live we know that we've seen yeah. the inflation rates but again more opportunities for investors yeah. uh, jumping on board as well our epc goes up we've got energy efficiency yeah. running the properties to try and, try and keep those bills down as well yeah. i do watch him that martin lewis because he kind of gives you loads of money saving tips he is pretty yeah. good yeah, yeah you know do yeah. listen to any any ideas as well that you can have to try and say it be more energy efficient within your, yeah. within your property and save yeah. money Perfect. Short but sweet episode, but I, I think I know, it's... I know, uh, thinking, oh God, not, not the gas and electric again. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It, but, it, it, it is part of what we do for a living. Isn't yeah, it? and it's on it's on a lot of people's minds, isn't it? So I think it's been worthwhile addressing that. Thank yeah. you, Andrea. No, you're welcome. Bye, Thank Mark. you so much. Bye, I'll speak to you soon. Bye.